for a lot of people, especially if you're starting something new, especially if you want to pivot, you might have this idea or this plan of what it is that you want to do and you might start doing it and realize, you know what, this actually isn't for me, but still finding that trust in yourself. Of, okay, maybe this isn't it, but I'm going to keep going and trust that I will get to where it is that I need to go. Are you at a crossroads in your career? Ready for a change, but you're not sure how to get there? Don't worry. We are about to produce your best life together. Welcome to the Second Act Success Podcast. I am your host, Shannon Russell. I am a former television producer turned boy mom. I left my dream job to find family balance, and in doing so, I produced my dream life. Now I am a business owner, podcaster, and career coach. My mission is to help other women like you find what they are truly meant to be doing. If you are ready to start over in your career or pivot to a new purpose, then get ready to be inspired by stories of women who have done just that. We will share advice and actionable tips to motivate you as you move along on your path. It is time to shine, so let's start producing your balanced life of abundance today. This is Second Act Success. Calling all women who have ever thought about launching a business. Is that you? Then get cozy and get ready to take notes. We are talking all things small business with business coach Krista Campbell. Krista is an expert on how to grow your business while keeping your mind and your heart aligned. She owns her own photography business and a coaching practice. Plus, she is the host of the She Calls Her Shots podcast. Oh, and she is also my business coach. (laughs) All right, it is time to talk tips for how you can build a business that you love. Meet Krista Campbell. Krista, welcome to Second Act Success. How are you? Hi, Shannon. I'm good. I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited to chat with you and kind of dive into your story and get your advice on starting a business. So why don't you tell us about starting your own photography business and how you did that? Yeah. So that journey started for me while I was still in college back in 2010. I had, at the time, like most people at that age, I was in school studying for a certain thing. I had this idea of who I thought that I was going to be. For my 21st birthday, I bought myself, I've always been passionate about photography. So I bought myself like a real professional digital SLR camera. And so that was my birthday present to myself. I started to learn it. And at the time when I was in college, my roommate had started her own photography business. She was a few years in, she did mostly weddings and was looking for someone to come and assist her, a second photographer. I was thinking, oh, well, this is great. I had a job, but all of my money just like went back into like clothes and things that you buy and things. So it was like, oh, great. I, I can have this thing that I do on the side that's a hobby where I can also make money and it's fairly stress-free because I'm doing it with somebody who actually has their own business. And so I did that with her for about a year. And then there was one weekend she called me and she was a little frantic. She had accidentally double booked herself. She was a month away from having two weddings on the same day. And so she was like, well, will you take it? Will you shoot it by yourself? And I thought, well, I guess we're going to do this, right? Like I'm doing it long enough. They always say like, you're never going to feel 100% ready. And I was kind of happy that more or less got kind of pushed into doing it myself. So did my first wedding. And after that, I thought, okay, well, I've done the first one. I guess that's kind of done with. And I guess I can just start to build this on my own. So I built it while I was in college, again, having really no idea how to build a business. I just started to do weddings for people that I knew, friends of friends, kind of that inner circle. And then 10 years later, I moved to California later. There's been a lot of moving parts in between, but but it's been really fun. So yeah, it really became a lot bigger than I expected it to. I should also note and say that I also worked full-time building that business. So I worked full-time for 10 years. Really? Yeah. From 2010, when I did my first wedding by myself, and then till 2019, I had been working pretty much full-time during that entire journey. I was a university recruiter for a tech company. So I think that's an important part to not leave out because I think for a lot of people, especially if you're starting something new, especially if you want to pivot, especially if you're kind of in this transition phase, it's so important to talk about there's a transition and there's likely going to be something that you're also doing and it doesn't make you less of whatever it is that you're wanting to step into. That was a big block that I had to get over. But yeah, that's kind of what brought me to where I am today. I love that you brought up that point too, because clearly when you're starting a business, the money isn't there right away. You obviously needed your full-time job to be able to pay the bills while you were growing your business. 
Yeah. And photography you can do on the weekends and you can do after mm -hmm. hours. Yeah. Well, throughout the whole nine years, it was a lot of weddings. It was a lot of engagements. It was a lot of weekends. It was a lot of late night after work, coming home, going through the photos, editing the photos, answering emails, doing all the things. So it was flexible enough that it allowed me to to do both. Unfortunately, through those nine years, it created this I don't know, this idea, this belief, this part of me that just got used to working and then working. So then when I actually became a full-time business owner, all I knew was just working all the time. And so that was another mental block that I had to get through. Like I said, I had also moved. So I think that's an important thing to know too. So if you're relocating, if you're starting something else, you know, you're likely going to need something else as you regrow, no matter how long you've been doing it. I think that was a struggle for me. I'd been doing photography for four years, but I was in a new state. I didn't know any of these people. I didn't have a market. And so it was having to make that shift again of, oh, you know what? Even though I know that I know what I'm doing, I kind of have to be okay with starting from the beginning again. Like not the very beginning, but building new clients, building a new market, getting used to the community, getting myself out there. And just like kind of always embracing the fact that we're always like beginning at something and just mm -hmm. getting curious and and being able to explore, I guess. And then so what happened in 2019 that made you leave your full-time job? 2017, 2018 were probably my two busiest years for uh, for weddings and photography in general. So I had gotten to the point at the job that I was doing, I was traveling for career fairs. I was traveling for all sorts of things, which I know like the younger version of me thought, oh, you get to travel for work. That's so glamorous. It's not as glamorous as you think. And when I had one weekend where I was coming back from the East Coast, Boston on a Friday, a Friday afternoon, and I had a wedding that Saturday here in California, and the stress that was on me of if the flight's delayed, if there's any issues at all, I have to be there. And it was just that realization that as this grows, I can't do both. And I didn't want to shift what I was doing in my job because I actually enjoyed the career that I had but I couldn't do both. There's just that realization of at some point, something's going to drop and I don't want it to be my business. So I had to make that decision to to leave. And I think that's important to talk about too, because I know some people, they kind of use a second plan or a second job or something that they want to do as their exit strategy because they don't like what they're doing. But I think there's also some of us, sometimes it's hard to leave. For me, it was actually kind of a tough decision because I loved my company. I loved my team. I had a great salary, all these things. But I had to make that decision for myself of, okay, but this is more important and I want to be able to build this for myself. And just recognizing that it can be either, but yeah. but there is, I think, both sides of the coin of I'm really ready, I want to get out now versus I'm comfortable, do I just keep going? There's two different sides of the coin, I think, when it comes to like leaving to pursue what you want to do full time. Yes, being comfortable, it just keeps us where we are and kind of keeps us stuck and then time goes by and the fact that you were able to decide, okay, I want to go full force into my business and see where this can go. That took a lot. And how has it been since then? You've actually opened another business. So kind of tell us about, you know, where you've gone from there until up until now. Well, oh, the shift of big decisions brings you to new places that you never expected to bring you to. So when I left in 2019, I had this idea of what I wanted to do. I thought that I wanted to go into photography education. I knew I had education on my heart. I knew I wanted to explore some way of helping other people. And at the time, I thought, well, what have I been doing for the last 10 years? I've been shooting weddings and building a business. And so the angle I went with that was thinking that I would teach people the technicality of how to actually shoot better, how to pose better, how to get lighting, et cetera, et cetera, all of the technical things. I started to explore that for a little bit and then realized, you know what, I know how to do this for myself, but I don't enjoy teaching this to other people. And that was difficult because I left my full-time job thinking that this was going to be the thing that I pursued. And three months in, I realized, oh, actually, this isn't it. And then I was like, what did I do? Was this the wrong decision? And I think that's an important thing to normalize is that we're going to change our minds. You might have this idea or this plan of what it is that you want to do and you might start doing it and realize, you know what, this actually isn't for me, but still finding that trust in yourself of, okay, maybe this isn't it, but I'm going to keep going and trust that I will get to where it is that I need to go. My fallback was, oh, well, I'll just keep doing weddings. I'll keep doing all the things that I'm doing. And then COVID hit and then there was nothing for nine months. And so 
it was another time and space for me to actually just have to get comfortable sitting with myself. And I think this was an important learning moment for me of sometimes we're so used to go, 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 and we're doing the things we're used to doing. And so I just had to get comfortable sitting with myself and figuring out, okay, like, what do I want? What do I want to do? How do I want to spend my time? And after many months of doing that self-reflection and kind of just doing the things that I needed in that moment, I landed on, okay, I do want to help people. I want to help people grow a business, but not the technical parts of photography, but just all of the moving pieces of what it takes to actually start a business, the mindset shifts, the blocks, the the clarity, the how to prioritize, the feelings of, oh my gosh, I don't feel like I'm enough. I don't feel like I can do this. All of the struggles that I went through, I'm like, I know that I am more than qualified. I have not only moved across the country, I've rebuilt businesses, I've started another business. Like this is something that I can help people with. And so I launched a podcast and started doing one-on-one coaching. And yeah, the business has evolved quite a bit from where it started. But yeah, I feel like it all kind of led every single experience. And this is the interesting thing about the hardships and the challenges. Every single challenge, every single hardship now makes me a better coach. Mm -hmm. And so at the time, every time I struggled, it felt like it was a setback. It felt like it was something that was not helping me. And then now hindsight, I can look back and think, oh, you know what? Actually, every single time I had to work through something, it's now made me better at what it is that I have to do. So all of the learning moments kind of culminated into this big shift. Right. And now you're sitting here like, I'm going to be a business coach for others and help others get in the right mind frame and the right place to really grow their business and support them. And it's that education piece that you had been Mm -hmm. wanting. Mm -hmm. So for listeners who are thinking about starting a business and they just need that support. Well, I think it's so important. The term business coach is so broad because you could, I feel like, throw anything at Instagram and you'll stumble across a business coach of some sort. So I think it's really important if you're looking for a business coach, it's not a one size fits all thing. So I think it's so important to find somebody that you connect with. I think as coaches, one of the biggest pieces on why a coaching relationship will work or not work is do you actually click? Do you have the same values? Are the same things important to you? Do you approach business in the same way? And that was something I had to learn because when I was first starting off, I was comparing myself to a lot of business coaches that I saw online, but I admired what they were doing, but I didn't love the way that they were doing certain things. And so I felt a lot of pressure to have to, oh, I guess this is how I need to be, though, because this is they're making money, they're successful, all of the stories that I started telling myself of who I needed to be. And so once I cleared a little bit of that mess out of the way, I finally landed on, okay, what is it that I actually do? How do I want to help people? And so what I have landed on is helping creatives, helping photographers, helping someone who is either passionate about helping others, educating others, serving others in that online space or in person. I want to help them really work through and get the support that they need to just feel like they have the clarity. They can get past overwhelm. They can, you know, have a plan for what it is that they want to do. There are some coaches who specialize in very specific things. For example, I at one point had a coach who was Instagram. She That was her jam. That was her one thing. And that was kind of what a lot of our sessions went back to. And while I think that that's so valuable, if you have one platform that you want to grow on and there's one person that you can go to, amazing. But I found for me, you know, it's great to have a focus on what it is that you want to grow on this one platform. But what about everything else? Because there's so much more involved in the business than just the marketing or the posts that you make or the call to actions or the launches. And so I really wanted to kind of take that holistic route of, okay, let's figure out what your goals and plans are and let's figure out how we can make really super kind of nitty gritty actionable steps that don't feel overwhelming, that can help you see momentum, that help you build up your confidence, that help you get to where you want to go. Through the 12 years of business, I have made mistakes in all sorts of ways of launching and marketing and doing things. So there are a lot of things that I can help with. But yeah, look for that person that you feel like you you share the same values with, you connect with and figure out what is my end goal? Why do I want to coach? Is it for support? Is it because I need clarity with a certain topic? Is it because, you know, I just need someone who can keep me accountable and kind of give it to me real, but also in a gentle, supportive way? So yeah, figuring out what your priorities are and then kind of looking in the space to see who might be able to help you get to where it is you want to go. So if someone is listening and they want to start a business, what tips would you give them to even start? 
like maybe they have an idea of what they want to create, but how do they take those first couple of steps to really start launching their own business? Well, I'd say first things first, and this is a very common pitfall that I think we all fall into. I'm guilty of it myself, is sometimes we get lost in research mode. And sometimes we have this habit of thinking the more prepared I can be, the more research I can do, the more information I can gather, the better I will be at being able to handle whatever it is that I want to do. So one thing I want to encourage you is if you are in that mode of I think I want to explore something, my encouragement is figure out the lowest hanging ways of how you can actually start to do the things that you want to do in very safe spaces that, you know, maybe doesn't require working with brand new people or putting yourself out there. But are there people that you can start with that, you know, a safe space where you can just start to grow those muscles? Because what I find ends up happening is we get so lost in research mode of I need to learn more. I need to get this skill. I need to get this training. I need to do this thing. And in some cases, it might be great to do these things in tandem, Mm -hmm. start off really small while you're also getting your training. But Otherwise, we end up blocking ourselves from actually starting because we think that there's going to be a point where we're so prepared that we'll just enter into what it is that we want to do and be like, I'm here and I know exactly what I'm doing. Spoiler alert, that doesn't happen. You will always feel like there's more to learn. Hey, it's Shannon. If you are enjoying this podcast, then you will love my weekly newsletter. It's full of career advice, productivity tips, and of course, inspiring stories of women who have launched a new career that they love. Just go to secondactsuccess.co to sign up. Plus, you'll get the My Success Vision Board to help you with your 2023 planning as well. Now it's back to the episode. I would say first things first is just figure out, is there a way that I can start doing this really small, just implementing it and just building that muscle? When I was first coaching, I had the podcast for a year, so I felt confident in that I knew that I could help people and I knew that I had things that I could share. But I hadn't ever had a call where I was looking at someone and helping them through something. And so I started really small. I had people that I knew. I got them on the phone. Hey, like, what are you struggling with? How can I help you through it? And so I had these one-off conversations. And as I started to see shifts happening in calls and started to grow that muscle, I realized, oh, okay, I can do this. This is something I can do. And so just figuring out, you know, how can I take this in a very bite-sized amount and just start to implement it? into my life. I love that. Even if you don't want to just be digital and online, if you want to open a makeup store, whatever it might be, just start looking at the little pieces and what you can do to create that early Mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Maybe you look at the real estate, maybe you start looking at what kind of makeup you'd want to sell. It's like all of those little things. And as you start doing those, you'll get more confident. Yeah. And you'll just be that much further ahead. Especially to your point, you know, because we have been talking about kind of online and the ability to just be able to start doing things. If you are someone who maybe you're a certified makeup artist, you're like, but Krista, I already know. I know I know how to do makeup. I know I know how to do all of the skills that will be required. To your point, okay, great. How many in-person networks have you gone to with other people who own stores, right? Like there's always some connections or muscles that you can build that you maybe haven't had to do before. So figure out what does a day in the life of someone who owns a makeup store, what does that look like? What are they having to do? Paperwork, file, like are there things that they need to do and how can you start introducing those things into your life now so that it doesn't feel so overwhelming when you actually jump in to do it? Yeah, because there are so many pieces to running a business that you don't think about, right? All the admin side, the getting your LLC, getting your website, Mm -hmm. your social media. There's so many things in actually launching a brand and launching a business and a lot of stuff that we don't want to do, right? When you think Mm -hmm. about starting a business, that's not the stuff that excites you most likely, Mm -hmm. but it's the stuff that's important. And I know you were talking about research. The kind of research you do want to do is market research. If you're going to open a store in your town, are there already 10 stores just like it? Or if you're going to open up a business, are you niche down enough to know what kind of business will be successful and not one that's just going to get lost in the shuffle. So that kind of research, as long as you're not using it as a way of stalling yourself, yeah, can be beneficial. And to kind of build off of that, if you find yourself in that, I'm not really sure if the research I'm doing is a blocker or if it's actually helpful. The question that I have for you is, are you also taking steps while you're doing the research? Because usually the research that block is blocking us 
we're not doing anything except, oh, well, I have to get this accreditation or, oh, I have to do this. And and then, oh, well, what else are you doing to open it? Oh, nothing, because I have to do this before I can even start. And that's usually the sign of, oh, this is like actually a blocker to what you want to do, as opposed to if you're doing the research and also getting involved in those groups, doing like doing the other things that you need to do to help you grow, then you know, okay, this isn't actually a mindset block. This is me just doing my due diligence of the things that need to get done. And do you think that one of the big things that blocks people is actually telling their friends and family about what they want to do? That imposter syndrome that everyone loves to talk about of like, oh, should I tell them that I'm trying this? Mm -hmm. And what if they don't like the logo I'm thinking of? What if I'm not supported? Do you find that that's a major blocker than a lot of people find? It's often way more difficult to tell our family than it is to tell random strangers on the internet. It's so easy to just launch something online to people that you don't know because there's less of a fear of judgment or if they do judge you, you don't know them. So it doesn't hold as much weight, emotional weight. Um, It is really difficult. And I think, you know, for me, I had, I experienced a lot of this because I started my business so young. I'm still in college. I think a lot of my family thought, oh, this is a hobby. So, I mean, I also thought of it as a hobby to be fair. So maybe we were all on the same page there. But then when I decided to leave my well-paying corporate tech job to do my other business, even though I'd been doing it for so long, you're going to get all the people that are like, why would you give up everything that you have to do this thing. And it's the same thing whether you're starting off and you're just building something from scratch or if you've been doing it, you're still going to get that that fear of being judged by people that you know. And I think something I always encourage people to remember is anytime someone offers you business advice, not from a coaching perspective, but Mm -hmm. I'm talking like family or someone who doesn't have their own business or someone who (laughs) wants to be their own business owner but hasn't actually taken the leap, a lot of the times when they come to you with that judgment, sometimes it's coming back from something that is blocking them, a fear that they have. Maybe maybe they actually want to pursue something, but they're too afraid to actually take the leap. And some of that judgment or thoughts or concerns or loving concerns is 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 because they care about you. But also sometimes it's this, you know, oh, I wish that maybe I would have done this for myself. And that's usually a few layers deep. So it's not going to be something that ever like comes out and is said. But it's just remembering that there are going to be people no matter what stage you're in, no matter how much experience you have, no matter how long you've been doing it, that are going to kind of have that that feeling whenever you decide to take some big leap or pivot or do something new. And just remembering that it's it doesn't actually have as much to do about you. If they're not building the business, if they're not doing the same things that you're doing, they can have their opinions and thoughts on how it's going to go, but do they actually like have the knowledge, you know, of like how it's actually going to work? Probably not. And there's that saying, I'm not going to get it right, but it's like, be careful who you trust to tell your dream to. Mm-hmm. And you maybe you just don't tell certain people until you're ready to launch. Yeah. And then when you launch and you put it on social media, hey guys, I'm launching this brand. I'm starting this business. You're putting it out there. And then hopefully all you'll get is support and you'll get Mm -hmm. business from people sharing your info. And that's when it spreads and things are are glorious. But maybe just hold it tight to your chest until you feel like you can handle the nightmares. Mm -hmm. That's an important lesson to learn, even with some people that you love, even with some people that you're close to especially when you get an idea that's so exciting, not everyone is going to see the dream the same way that you're going to see it. And not everyone will be able to see the potential or know how much you're going to put into it to get to where you want to go. So yeah, it's such an important sentiment. And also, this is the important time to, especially in the beginning, I know that we can get so caught up in, and it's important to do the strategy, the framework, all of the technical things that it takes to grow a business, but it is crucial that you are looking at the things that you're telling yourself, how you even think about the growth of your business and how you think about that inside your head, because that is going to be the thing that at the end of the day, when that judgment comes, when that when that fear comes in, that's going to be the thing that's going to really help you carry through to make sure that you're sticking with what it is that you want to do. So really, really putting an effort, especially in the beginning, because everything is so new. And so I don't want to say fragile, but it is because you, you know, you don't have a lot of experience to back up the dreams that you have. So really making sure you're, you're pouring into yourself into those times. This is what sets you apart from other business coaches. I think Krista, because you really do focus on the mindset work and making sure that you are taking care of yourself in the process, because it is a lonely 
venture if you're opening a business on your own and it's stressful and emotional. So I love that you are reminding everyone to go back to the why and go back to how you're feeling and how you're taking care of yourself and preserving that fragile state you might be in. Growing a business is a long game. So I love that you're reminding us of that. Yeah, we're in it for the long run. And I think that was the interesting thing too for me was that I wanted to have both mindset and tactical because both are important. And if you if you listen to my podcast, if you know me personally, I will talk about manifesting till the cows come home. I have my own manifesting story. It was absolutely incredible to watch it unfold. I didn't even know what manifesting was when it happened, which I think is so amazing. But also, I didn't want to just be, oh, well, let's just let's just put it out into the universe and then that's it. There has to be action. There has to be strategy. There has to be things that you're doing. And this is maybe another tip for someone looking for a coach is finding someone who can balance mindset work with the strategy, but making sure you're focusing on both because strategy is great. But if your mindset isn't there, if you're just doing things to do it and to see results, you're going to burn out so fast. And so finding someone who can, who has the experience to actually give you the tactical strategies, but also make sure your mindset is nurtured along the way. Yes. <laughs> so once you do the business form, if you get the website, you're set up for your business. What are some, maybe a couple strategies that you would give people to remind themselves that businesses will take time and the money will come eventually? I found that when I was growing, the times when I felt the most, I should be doing more, I should have more clients, I should be doing this. I usually had those thoughts come up, especially when I wasn't focusing on the actual things I needed to focus on. And what I mean by that is I felt like I was spinning my wheels a lot. I felt like I was posting all the time. I felt like I was doing all of the things that I needed to do, but I was branching myself out so much that I really wasn't making traction on anything. And that's when I felt like a lot of those thoughts came up of, I should be further along. I should be doing this. I think this is a muscle like anything else that you have to grow. You have to have those moments of feeling those things to get to the other side. But I think over time, what you'll find is when you can trust that the things that you're doing are actually moving the needle. I came back to, okay, what is the thing that I feel like really builds the most connection with people? For me, it's my podcast. Okay, well, how can I go all in on my podcast? And what other things can I do that support the podcast? So for me, it was, okay, well, I can create blogs because that'll bring people to my website, but it's blogs of my podcast. So I made the work much more strategic and intentional around the parts of my business that would actually help me grow. But it's hard. Yeah. We always want business to grow faster than it does. We always think that if it's not growing fast, there's something wrong with us yeah. or, you know, and I think that's where a business coach comes in handy because you can actually get honest and ask yourself, should I be doing something different or do I just need to trust that what I'm doing now is the right thing and I need to just keep going and putting in the effort? Sometimes you feel like you're so in your own head as a business owner that it's nice to just have someone else to talk to who has been down that road before. Do you suggest for any newbie business owner out there or even someone who's thinking about opening a business, they find someone to be able to talk to about the process and share ideas and someone to lean on? Yeah, this is such a great question because, I mean, it's a lot of money to invest in a coach. And I think this is why it's so important to figure out what type of support do I need? Because there's this message going around, which I have a lot of feelings around of like, you know, you have to invest in your business if you're going to grow and you have to. But no one really talks about like, does that mean I'm supposed to like go in debt for my like, am I supposed to invest so much that? you know, I'm going to do all these things that I can't really afford right now because that's the only way that I'm going to move forward. And so figuring out, okay, what type of level of support do I need? Do I actually need to invest into someone who's going to be working with me really closely one-on-one? -on -one? Do I feel like I am at a point where I actually have the clarity to know what are my goals? What do I want to do? And I help clients figure out their goals, but you do kind of have to have a basic understanding of like, where do you want to grow? What is it that you want to do? What do you want to focus on? Because a good coach isn't going to tell you what you should be doing or how you should grow. Like that's not the type of coach that you want. They're just going to be there to support you in the things that you want to do. So if you feel like you're so new that you don't quite yet have an understanding of that, if you're still kind of experimenting, figuring out, I'm not really sure, figure out are there group programs, for example, like my program Amplify, but are there group programs where you can get involved in, get some 
kind of one-on-one -on -one support, but, you know, at a price that you can afford and it actually makes sense for where you are. Right. So I think it's so important to, yes, find support. Um, I do think that getting some sort of one-on-one -on -one support, I will always say, is going to be better than purchasing a course where you don't really get any support. Like if it's just a course that you consume and you get no other right ability to be able to talk to somebody, um, I have invested so much money. And if I would have just taken that money and put it into a coach, it would have been so much better. <laughs> but really get clear on what is it that I actually need support with and how can I get that in a way that also fits with my budget. And there's so much free content out there. So let's just go to your podcast, for example. Tell us a little bit about your podcast. That's free content that's about mm -hmm. business owners and about entrepreneurship that anyone could listen to and learn a lot from. Yes. I love podcasts. My one caveat to podcasts, and this will this will be true for my podcast, even anyone who listens to this podcast to my podcast, is that sometimes we get so consumed with free content that we spend all of our time listening to free content, which is so beautiful that we have the opportunity to be able to do that. So I think just be careful. Yeah, Business podcasts are amazing and it's so great to help shift your perspective, but having someone to talk to or having some additional support that can help rein you in to make sure that you're not trying to take on too much or trying to grow too quickly. You gotta find the ones that you love and I love yours. She calls her shots. It's a really great one that I highly recommend and I'll link to in the show notes. Tell us about all the ways that listeners can connect with you. Yeah, if you're looking for a, another podcast, She Calls Her Shots, you can find it on Apple, Spotify, anywhere that you listen to podcasts. So I have one-on-one -on -one coaching and I recently launched my group coaching uh, program, Amplify. And the heart behind Amplify really was because when I was first starting, I didn't have the thousands of dollars to continue to invest in a coach. So I wanted to offer a program where people, there is there is an investment. It's relatively small compared to most other programs. And you get lifetime access. We get two calls per month. So you get some one-on-one -on -one support. You get that community. You get that ability to be able to grow. And to me, I really do think of Amplify as kind of for people who I want to work with a coach. I want to have support, but I'm not yet ready to go all in. And I'm also not ready to just do a mastermind where I only get support for six weeks and then I'm on my own for the rest of my business building career, Amplify could be a really good fit for you. So you can find that at heychristamarie.com forward slash Amplify. I do have limited spots for one-on-one -on -one coaching, but really um, just depending on your level of support and what you need, those are the best places. Krista, thank you so much. I feel like we talked so much about business building and goals and mindset, and you just shared so much to help my listeners. So thank you so much for being here. You're so welcome. It was such a pleasure and I hope that it was helpful. Oh, there was just so much good stuff in this episode. Krista shared so many key takeaways that I hope will help you think a little bit more about how to either start your own business empire or how to grow the one that you are already cultivating. Don't forget to head over to the show notes for this podcast, or you can go to secondactsuccess.co forward slash podcast to have more information about how you can connect with Krista. Before we leave, a special thank you goes out to you for spending just a little bit of your day with us. Remember this, you are on your way to find Second Act Success, and I am here to support you. This podcast is here to support you, to give you that inspiration, to give you those tips that you need to take one more step towards your goal. Now go out and make it an incredible day, my friend. I will catch you next time for an all-new episode of the Second Act Success Career Podcast. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found some gems of inspiration and some takeaways to help you on your path to second act success. To view show notes from this episode, visit secondactsuccess.co. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss a single episode. Reviews only take a few moments and they really do mean so much. Thank you again for listening. I'm Shannon Russell and this is Second Act Success.